Hi everyone, welcome to a new week in the life video. It is Thursday the 22nd of August and I was up late last night finishing going over the first 10,000 words of my new novel to send it to my agent, which definitely doesn't mean that I've been refreshing my inbox every three seconds to check to see if he's replied yet. I have been doing that. I have other work to be getting on with to distract myself. So <laughs> this morning I finished reading Underland by Robert McFarlane, which is a book all about caves and tunnels and mines, the unseen places in the earth, seeking out the quiet and reflecting and looking at the way that we have impacted the world around us and continue to do so. It tries to do so much and doesn't present you with lots of answers, but just kind of musings and beautiful imagery and amazing facts. It made my mind fizz a little bit. So I finished reading that this morning. I had the last 50 pages or so to read and have been writing my review for Toast magazine. I really like reviewing books in different formats, so obviously I talk about books on here and even when I talk about them on here sometimes I'm talking about them in a really in-depth analytical kind of way, sometimes just more in a you know let's chat over a cup of tea kind of way. Um, then I review books in text format for Toast Magazine and other publications and at the moment I have a monthly radio slot where I talk about books and each of those require something specific to that form. So yeah, I've just finished writing this review and I thought before I crack on with other stuff, I would read you a tiny bit of it um, so you can get a feel of the book in case you would like to go and check it out. I'm not sure if the review will have gone up by the time this goes up. If it has, I'll link it down below. So the end of my review is this. Spoiler, I like the book. Um, Underland as a text isn't exactly linear. It is scattered, zooming in on tiny details, then out again to the big picture, branching like its own cave system. The chapters communicate with each other, much like the wood wide web where trees whisper underground, and I found it mesmerizing. A piece of writing advice I often quote is from Philip Pullman. Read like a butterfly, write like a bee. In other words, pollinate. Right as a magpies, we are influenced by everything we've ever read, everything we've ever seen, even if we don't realise it. And both the writing style and contents of Robert McFarlane's Underland embody this. He darts from cave to sea, from glacier to forest, asking us to follow him. He is a fortune teller, a wonder seeker, a folklorist, a scientist. It is time for us to pause, he says, if we want to move forward. It is time for us, he warns, to look a little deeper. So I'm gonna send this off to Toast now, and sorry, I keep looking at these and getting distracted. I'm gonna insert a clip so you can see them. They're sunflowers, and they make me happy to have them next to my desk, uh, and I need to send them an invoice to you. I like to send my invoices at the same time as the work so that I'm always on top of everything. Um, and then I'm gonna to go to the post office. I need to work out how to carry all of these parcels, one without dropping them and two without breaking my back. And from there, I'm gonna go on a little walk because it's Thursday and I haven't left the house apart from to go to the corner shop since Sunday. <laughs> so that's not great and I need some fresh air. So I'm gonna go on a walk and think about my pitch. So as I said, I sent my agent last night the first 10,000 words of my new book and we're gonna be submitting that soon to publishers, but I need to have the pitch ready with it. So that includes a synopsis of the entire book. And I have worked out most of the plot, but there are a few, not plot holes, but just a few things I want to iron out. And I think that walking helps my brain work. So I'm gonna do that. And on the way, I'm gonna nip into a Korean supermarket and this is not healthy, I know, excuse me, but buy some instant noodles that I tried out a month or so ago and I thought they were really really good so I'm gonna go find them because I'm going on book tour well that's not true it's not a tour I'm doing one event this weekend that's not a tour I'm doing an event those are the words I was looking for I'm doing a book event this weekend in Edinburgh and I get to my hotel really late on Saturday night and I know that if I don't have something in my bag I will probably not get the chance to eat anything or will have to pick up I don't know a sandwich in the station or something and I would like something warm. So I'm gonna go pick some of those up so I can have them in my suitcase in case I don't get the chance to pick up any other food. Um, anyway, I, I ramble. I always feel, feel like when I start these weekly vlogs, the first segment is always me kind of talking at you a bit too much and then I learn how to uh, filter myself more as the week goes on. So um, it, I'll be back later. <laughs>
Hi guys, it's Saturday. As I mentioned on Thursday, I'm doing an event in Edinburgh this weekend, but there are no trains from London this weekend because they're doing all this engineering work. So I came up to the Northeast yesterday, saw my sister and my niece and nephew, which was really cute because I hadn't seen them for a long time. And then I stayed at my mum's. This is my mum's. She's actually not here. She's away this weekend. So I've used her house like a hotel. Thanks, mum. And she left me a really cute note over there, which I'll insert a clip of. Um, so I thought today, before I head up to Edinburgh, I'm gonna take myself on a walk along the seafront, along the cliff tops. It's actually really hot outside, too hot. So I don't know how long I'm gonna be able to walk for. I had hoped to walk from Sunderland to South Shields, but I might have to cut it short. I am gonna get myself some fish and chips for lunch, which will be great. And I got up early this morning to go into town to get my mum a thank you present for letting me use her hotel, her hotel, her house is a hotel. So I went into TK Maxx looking for that uh, candle that was in my favorites video last month, the smoked vanilla one. They didn't have it, but they had this, which is vanilla pumpkin latte. And it smells exactly how that should smell. It smells incredible. And I also picked up this mug, which was cute for my gran. So I'm gonna go for a walk. I am gonna go and have a cup of tea with my gran. And then I'm gonna head up to Edinburgh. So, I'll take you with me. playing Harry Potter double. If you haven't played double before, you have to... Okay, there's a card <laughs> in the middle and then you each have a pile of cards. And I don't know how they do it. I want to look up the algorithm for it. Yeah. But on every card, there, one thing will match whatever is in the middle. So in here, that would be the key. Hmm. Uh, but it's really hard Snitch. to see them. <laughs> so we're going to be playing them. So we can get rid of all of their cards first. And Jean is dressed appropriately because she's wearing it. <laughs> Dobby, you just, you just took one of my cards just so now you have extra. Oh, you can have it back. You don't want extra. <laughs> so playing this in their pajamas and we, we also have a Harry Potter ASMR room on in the background. I really love these. I'll link it down below. I actually heard about them because of Lauren and her cozy reading that. Oh, she's really? She's talking about them. Thanks, Lauren. <laughs> very, very uh, soothing. Ever said? <laughs> Goblet. No. <laughs> Ravenclaw. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Luna. 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 <laughs> Glasses. No. I'm like, no. Oh. Fang. <laughs> are you, are you going to play deck if she hangs up? Ha. Ha. Oh, damn it. Oh, hey, 
welcome to Nighttime Lighting. It is Wednesday, the 28th of August. I didn't think I explained the last few clips very well. So I was in Edinburgh to do an event for Franklin and Luna Go to the Moon, which was so much fun. It was sold out, lots of great kids there. We invented planets, I did storytelling, we did illustration stuff, um, it was great. And then as I mentioned, there were no trains from London that weekend. So luckily, the festival had given me accommodation for one night, but if I'd wanted to go back on the Sunday, it would have taken me nearly twice as long as it should have done, and it's already a long journey. So thankfully, Jean, was up at home staying with her mum because she's from Edinburgh. So I went to stay with her and that was really lovely. And we did some work together and we also explored, went to some bookshops. We saw one festival show, which was really fun because it was at, well, the show itself was really great, but also it was in my one of my old lecture halls. I went to Edinburgh University and I love going back to the city because it owns a little piece of my soul. So it was in one of my old English, well, English literature lecture theatres. It's a general lecture theatre, but obviously I remember it for English literature. And we went to see, what was it called? Tom Riddle and the Harry Potter, teenage Tom Riddle and the Harry Potter musical parody. And it's touring, I think now, it's gonna be in London for about a month. And it's going to a couple of other places too. I'll link it down below because it was hilarious. And if it's coming to somewhere near you, then please go see it. Unfortunately, I can't find anything, no clips online, no songs online, so I can't show you any of it, but it is very, very funny. Um, so yeah, if you get the chance to see it, go see it. Um, today is Wednesday, and my agent called me. He really likes the first 10,000 words of my new book. Well, I have read all your material, and it's brilliant. Oh. Yeah. Um, I think um, the outline's really good. I think that... that... I finished writing a nine page pitch for it as well. Um, so we'll be sending that out to publishers next week. Um, so yeah, that's exciting and nerve wracking. Um, I've been doing loads of admin because I'm going on book tour to Sweden next week. If you're in Stockholm or Uppsala, it would be lovely to see you, but I've got lots of stuff to do before going. So um, I've been working on that as well as finishing my pitch. And then this afternoon was struck down by a migraine. So I've also had a couple of naps. I'm starting to feel better now, which is good because even though it is, what time is it? It's about quarter past nine, I think at night. Um, I am not finished work. I have to go to BBC Studios in two hours to go and do my, I was gonna say the monthly radio slot. This month I've actually done two slots um, on this particular show, talking about books for 45 minutes to an hour. It's a late night show, so it's between midnight and one, and then you can listen to it on catch up afterwards. So I'll link the show I'll be doing tonight in the description box down below if you want to go and catch up with it when this video goes up. You can listen to them on BBC Sounds. So it's BBC Radio 5 Live. Sarah Brett has a late night show on a Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday and every Wednesday part of that show is book related and I go on once a month to talk about books. Tea. I am trying to stay awake because I got up at six to do work this morning um, and then realised that was probably a silly idea given that I have to be <laughs> on the radio sounding awake at midnight. But as I said, I actually have had a couple of accidental naps a day due to um, having a migraine, which is probably not helped by the general disgrace of our country today and all of the utter bollocks going on in politics right now because um, Boris Johnson is suspending the government to try and push through a no deal Brexit. And I don't wanna talk about it because I might be sick. So anyway, Instead of talking about that, I thought what I would show you is some of the things I've been collecting recently, which are for Franklin and Luna and the Book of Fairy Tales book tour. Um, the book comes out in three weeks and then Katie and I will be doing events probably during October half term and then through the next year probably because I mean, as I said, this weekend I was still doing events for Franklin and Luna Go to the Moon, which came out last September. So we're always doing events for a long time. And I like to purchase props for these events, which I take along because I do interactive storytelling with the kids. So I read out the book, but I get them not to act out parts of it, but I give them characters and sounds and actions to make just so that they're always, hopefully they'll be engaged with the story anyway, because hopefully they would like it. But you know, having up to a hundred children between the ages of three and six and making sure that they are, you know, focused can be challenging. And I like a challenge. So props, 
are always my my thing. So I always enjoy picking out things that I can use as props with the kids. Anyway, so I'll show you a few things that I have picked up. I've picked up a child's dressing gown. It's not velvet, sadly, because um, it's velvet in the book. So in the book, Franklin and Luna go to a bookshop out of town. It's owned by a lady in a velvet dressing gown. So one of the kids can wear this dressing gown and they can be the woman or man who runs the bookshop. There are spiders wearing spectacles who organize the shelves. There are books on every topic from art to magic spells. So then some of the children can wear spectacles and we can have actions for spiders. Um, Franklin and Luna get sucked into a book of fairy tales, spoiler, and in the book of fairy tales, they meet these guys, the three little pigs. So soft, these toys. They also meet someone who might have some, some beans on them. His name may be Jack. Uh, they also meet a sleepy princess. So I've got these children's eye masks and some of the kids can wear those. I've got quite a few. Um, and then someone also has a race with Neil Armstrong, the tortoise. So someone can play the person who's having a race with them. And then I have medals for the people who have that race. And I also have lots of food, fake food, so that we can all have a picnic together because there may or may not be a picnic in the book as well. I have a few other things that I want to pick up, but it's gonna be a big box of things that I take with me on book tour to do interactive storytelling. So I thought I would show that. It's quite fun. Anyway, I'm gonna put all of this stuff away and do a bit of reading for work, maybe play some Harry Potter double with Mr. M and then go do the radio show and I'll take you along. Thank you, you too. Voice of the night. Uh, this is called Sweet Home. Who's this by? This is by Karis Bray and it's a short story collection. I recommend all of her books. She has three out so far, mm -hmm. two novels, one short story collection. Sweet Home is all about home and um, home life and all of these, or most of these stories surround family and children. There's a healthy mix of magical realism in some of them. Um, in one of the stories, a woman enjoys going to the supermarket because you can purchase babies there. Twins are half off because nobody would like to take those home because there's a lot of extra work there. morning everyone i've just been editing this together and realized that it's about 20 minutes long so i'm going to wrap this up here i will link anything that i've mentioned in the description box down below the underland review is up and if you leave a comment talking to us about the book your experience of reading his work or talking to us about how you would like to read his work then you'll be entered into a giveaway to win the books i review next month um what else did i have to say if you're in Uppsala, Stockholm or Nottingham, I'm doing events there in the next few weeks. I'll leave those details down below. I think that's everything. Let me know how you are in a comment down below because I would love to know. Let's have a chat. I'll speak to you all later. Lots of bookish love. Bye.